Welcome, Gorillas, to the first Gornation podcast here today with a really special guest, Dan Rosenberg, hey. three times national champion in Israel and fifth in the World Cup 2019 uh, World Championship in Moscow. For the middleweight. For the middleweight. Yeah, welcome. Happy to have Thank you here. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. Awesome. Like, uh, yeah, a lot of people were asking for this uh, to, to start a podcast, to um, to present athletes more from the inside and to get to know you more than we know you from Instagram stories, etc. And I'm really, really happy to have you here. Me too. I really think it's a great opportunity for me to get my audience to know me better and also to be a deeper part of Go Nation here. Yeah. When you present yourself to somebody, somebody new you don't know, what? how do you present yourself? Um, so yeah, that's a good question because I'm, I'm a person that has um, different skills in different areas that I, I'm trying to perfect and get to higher levels. So I'm not doing only one thing. Um, basically, I would, it depends on the person I'm presenting myself to. If it's someone from the sport field, I would say I'm a professional calisthenic, calisthenics freestyle athlete. Um, I'm training for six and a half years already. I have my labels, for example, three times Israeli champion. Um, top five in the World Cup, uh, World Championship in Moscow this year, um, in the middleweight category. Um, yeah, if it's someone for the sport, if it's someone, if it's a new peop new friend, for example, or friend of friends, I would say I'm an athlete, but I'm also creating content professionally because it's something I'm doing for, you know, for uh, as a job now, content creating and calisthenics, and I'm also playing music, playing the piano. I was playing the drums for four years and I was playing a uh, French horn for four years as well. So this is also something I really like doing. And yeah, that's that's my main things I'm doing right now. That's what I would say to a new person. <laughs> that's a lot. So yeah. you're interested in, in many, many things. You seem like a really yeah. interested and open person that likes to get and to know about yeah, new stuff. that's so true it's actually very true because I really like um, new cultures new people uh, new people and new um, stories of people that I don't know because I truly believe that everyone has their own story to tell and I'm really really willing to listen to other people and also to share my story you know so this is something that my work um, um, made me able to do because I can travel and meet more people new people more cultures, new places, and this is also something I'm very, very passionate about. Awesome. Like, um, you, you said so much, and or I think already the people, they feel that you achieve a lot already in your young years. How, how old are you? I'm at 21. 21. Just 21. With 21 years, and uh, I think the people would be interested in where you, did you get there? Like, uh, what was maybe one starting point where you thought I want to be more than average, for example. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I've always been a like active kid, you can say. I've always, always liked, lo liked uh, making new friends and being like friendly. And that's from young age. In school, I was pretty good because I, I really understood that it's important. I can't say I liked everything there. I can surely say I didn't. Who does? Yeah, but I understood why it's important. And then this is where I started, you know, to like grind and hustle for something in younger ages. Because, I don't know, maybe it's something in my personality. Maybe it's something that my parents uh, shaped me to. Or maybe it's just because I was lucky to be um, in situations where I just got to understand that if you're hustling for something um, long term, you're going to achieve bigger things, you know. And then this started from young age with school you can say and then I went to scientific class because it was pretty good with studies and this was harder I hustled harder I got really good grades actually I finished the middle school with um, average of 100 like out of 100 which is pretty extreme wow. then when I went to high school I started growing and I still had that mindset of kind of success that I need to work hard not really really into it but kind of because of the past and then I understood in the four years of high school in Israel that I don't want to study all my life. I want to do different things. I was exposed to street workouts and slowly shift, shifted my work to the athlete career I have and not only school. So I finished high school with lower average of grades, still good one, 
for me, but I finished it like uh, when I was the first in Israel in street workouts. When and when I started the high school, I was not even known. So this was the beginning of their serious career of mine, and I think what led to it is just from young younger age, disciplines of hard work and knowing what you want long term, even if in a momentary moment you don't really want it after one a one month of work for example you need to understand that long term if you want it you have to hustle and then long term you're gonna get what you want yeah that's it i think it's it's been like three years things since i finished high school and i've been working harder even shifting my focus only to the things i like because now i'm more free you know so yeah why do you think it's important to shift your focus on things you like? I I honestly believe that our time here is limited, not in the depre depressive way of saying that, but just in the realistic way. Your time is limited. You never know what's going to happen, honestly. Um, yeah, your life can end at random moments. You don't really know, hopefully. And I really believe that it won't end soon, <laughs> but it, it's it's random that's it you know anything can happen and this is why i think that every moment should be used to the max and it doesn't mean doing only impulsive things you really want to do right now but it means that you should have a plan that benefits you in the long term so if i think like i want to i want my job to be something that i love i'll have to start working now on things that that are going to profit me in the future you know this is why i'm doing street workouts but not only when i feel like it but i have my schedule that is planned and then in the long term, I can also make it a job and I can expand this to other areas and make profit. So you have to sacrifice long term, like yeah. you have to sacrifice short term to be have yeah. to become That's successful it. long term. Yeah, but the long term should be something that you want to do. You know, short term might be things that you don't really want to do right now, impulsively. But long term, it should be you should do the choices that you want to do, like things that you want to do and things that you love, you know. I wouldn't, for example, a bad example would be to choose a career that you know that will give you money long term, but you know that it's something that you just don't like doing, you're not passionate about. This is, a, in my opinion, a bad long term goal, you understand? That's true. May I ask you what's, what's your biggest goal in life? So I, I honestly don't have an ultimate goal yet, I'm aware of that and I'm I think the fact that I'm aware of that makes me feel comfortable with that. But I have some mid-term, like not very long, but a few years ahead goals. Um, I have, okay, one of my biggest goals right now is just to grow as an athlete. It's not a very specific goal, but I'm doing everything I can to grow. It means going to competitions abroad, even if it's really stressed. Like I can do one, like two weekends in a row of competitions. And that's pretty hard mentally and physically, but I will do it because I want to be present in many places in the world as much as possible to, you know, to just be present as an athlete, even if I win, even, even if I lose. And the biggest goal above that is just to spread my words and my positivity and really just spread love around the world, specifically in the Kalistanic scene right now. I'm doing that through my Instagram and I'm doing that physically like I'm trying to do it every moment that I'm with new people abroad and internationally. So this is one of my biggest goals right now. I'm working every day to do that. And of course, I'm not ashamed to say that I really want to make this a profession that I can live off. So I started doing content creating because I like it and I want to make money out of it. I'm competing because there's also money in competitions. Um, I'm doing collaborations with, with many companies. Um, the, one of the biggest are Renation. Yeah, that's something I'm doing as a, as a goal, you know. What is the thing that you think most, um, that holds back most of the people in our generation from having a fulfilled life and reaching their goals? I, I think there's more than one answer for that. There's a few reasons. Um, when I think about it right now, I think one of the reasons that make people right now not achieve their goals is because big goals in my opinion are long term you can't really you can be really lucky and get what you want very fast but usually if you want to be 100 percent sure that you're going to get what you want you're, you're going to have to work long term um, it's not going to be impulsive again and i think that our generation 
really needs everything fast as soon as possible. Um, you want to see someone, you can open Instagram in five minutes, see a hundred pictures of them. Like a few years ago, a few years, like maybe, I don't know, 50 years ago, you want to see someone, you had to wait a week to see them, just to see them, you know, and just an example. So if you change your mindset from short term to long term, and you actually understand that you have to put in work and you're not going to like it most of the way, if you're, if you're dedicated and passionate about this process, you're going to have your goals, in my opinion. And I think that most people just don't have this mindset these days. That's true. Like that's uh, an important thing um, to to be patient. And I think you're also a big fan of Gary Vee, yeah, um, yeah. Gary Vaynerchuk. And um, yeah, I appreciate uh, like a lot of his words as well. And I, th I know that you do as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's true. That's really, really true. But um, do you feel pressure when you go after your goals? Um, yeah, there is always pressure. Um, I'm not always chill. Um, but I think that if you are again aware of that and you look at it from the outside and understand that it's part of the process you're going through, um, it's not going to be perfect. You're going to be stressed. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be very, very happy. Um, you're going to be very, very sad some days. And everything is part of the process. When you look at it from the outside, when I do that, it makes me calm from the really, really inside of me. And even if my body feels stressed and my mind, my mind says, I have to do one million stuff right now, I won't make it. From the in, inside of me, I understand that it's part of the process and everything is going to be okay. And I'm going long term and I can always try again until I die. So that makes me more calm. Okay. What do you think is um, the, the, what are the secrets to become a professional calisthenics athlete? especially freestyle okay so honestly the the interesting thing is i don't think there's a secret i think um, the answers are in front of everybody they just don't really look at it you know they choose to ignore it maybe in the back of their mind maybe it's not a, an active choice but most of people just ignore it you know there's these quotes hard work bit talent and everything it sounds like a cliche but if you actually try to um, apply that on your own life from your own perspective and not as an Instagram post, you understand that it's very, very true. If you're gonna write down what you wanna do, what you want to achieve, then make that a plan and actually go after this plan even when it doesn't feel comfortable and even when, it, when you feel like you don't wanna do it, long term you're gonna again achieve your goal. And I think that is something that people know because they hear it always, but they don't really, really try to implement this in their own specific lives, you know? So, so it's like yeah this, this is general but if you're asking about calisthenics specifically um, I think one of the advantages and disadvantages together of calisthenics is that the sport is not it's pretty new so it's not very very organized and there aren't the, the rules about the sport not only competitions in general are not very very precise there's there's no specific place that you know every, you can read everything about the sports how to do stuff what's right what's wrong there's a lot of stuff and this is one advantage in my opinion because it makes the community very active and you know diverse it's nice but it's also hard to you know get to a very high level because you're always not sure how to do stuff and i'm struggling with it with that a lot until today even when i'm trying to do new stuff um i was actually for example the first guy to do a 360 in israel first one to do a 540 the second one to do a shrimp flip the first one to do a ganger um, the first one to do an alley -oop because and this this was one, one of my struggles because i didn't know how to do stuff and some of them i didn't do right in the beginning until now i'm fixing everything always and this is one of the struggles but i think the solution for that is just to be truly um, again dedicated and understand that you have you will have to try a lot of time until you get something because you don't have a trainer and you you're getting 200 advices from 200 different people and you're gonna have to try yourself to activate your mind and to actually think about this stuff you have to be active and not passive and this is how you can actually get stuff because the, bi the biggest athletes i can tell you for sure they have no secret they just worked a lot on what they're doing they tried to do an alley-oop and they failed and then they said okay what did i do wrong here do i need more swing they literally just thinking about what they are doing not waiting for someone to tell them what to do they were leading their own way because in this sport, this is, in my opinion, the 
um, kind of people that win. But you can be th this kind of person if you're just if you're just deciding to be one of them. You're gonna have to lead your own way because right now there is no um, one trainer that is right always and there's no one way to go and there are different ways to do everything so you're just gonna have to find your own way and push really hard to get there if that makes sense to you. It does, yeah, definitely. Mostly, again, it sounds like a cliche but it's really just hard work. You have to go out to the bars and you have to do what, you have to plan what you want to do. It doesn't have to be like a 10 pages plan, right? It can be a note in your iPhone with five sentences, but you have to know what you're going to do and then just write. And not just try blindly, try one time, try 10 times, and then reflect, see what you did wrong, try to ask different people, try to implement different stuff to see what works for you. Always reflect yourself, always, always, always. I take 200 videos uh, a week of me training. I upload maybe one or two of them every training, but I take them not for the Instagram, but firstly for me to reflect when I'm si sitting at home, when I'm just, uh, even before I go to bed, when I have these thoughts, thoughts, I can open my iPhone and look what I did, maybe have some new ideas for how to do stuff better. This is how I make myself better. I can't say I'm, I'm the best. I can say I'm not the best in the field in terms of how they judge freestyle right now, but I know that my method of doing stuff is the best for me. And this is what what's important because you always want to be do the best things that are best for you. Again, it's a cliche, but you want to be the best version of you. And to do that, you're going to have to have your own path of doing stuff. If you're going to take something that uh, a path that other person gave you, it's not going to be perfect for you and you won't be able to maximize your potential that way. So you're going to have to do it yourself. And this is what's hard for most people, in my opinion, to actually understand that they have to do stuff from their own perspective, not from how other person says it, not from how a quote from Instagram is, because someone else, a human, wrote this, you know? This is how they see things. You're gonna have to take this, take only the content of it, and implement this from your own eyes, and this is how you really can go further, in my opinion. Wow. Yeah. I really like the idea about um, reflecting and video watching and analyzing the videos that mm -hmm. you took from your workout. So do you have other hacks tips, advice that people can implement in their workout to become better? Mm. Well, I can say definitely that video, like shooting yourself is one of the best things I, I, I've ever chosen to do in my trainings. Um, even if there's no one to take my video for me, I would just ask, I would just put my phone somewhere and take it for me. I'm rarely going on the, I'm pretty extreme with that. I'm rarely going on the bar without the camera because I really want, I really have to know how I look from the outside because when you're competing, it doesn't matter what you see from your eyes, it only matters what other people see, what specifically the judges see. And for me, what's really important is how the crowd sees me and the fans especially. So I would always take the videos so I'm very, very aware of how I look like from the outside. And when you do that long term, you're gonna be more aware of your body in general. You can do stuff without the camera and know about how it looks like if you activate this muscle, how it looks like on camera and from the outside. So this is something that I, again, really recommend doing because you're going to be able to get better faster because you, this is the only thing that matters. The, the outside, and it sounds maybe stupid or shallow, but the camera is a very, very important thing in that matter. Um, I would also say that if you want to be a professional athlete, and I, um, the focus is on the word athletes because I see a lot of street workout people that do street workout, and I appreciate them, but when I see an athlete, it's different. They don't have to be the best. They don't have to have the craziest tricks, but they do have to have the lifestyle of an athlete. It means you don't have to eat healthy all the time, but you have to be aware of where, if your choice is to eat healthy or not. You understand? If you're going to McDonald's and you don't care if, if it's healthy or not, that's the, that's a problem. An athlete can go to McDonald's three times a week if he chooses that this is the right path for him as an athlete, because maybe he's doing a cheat week. Maybe he's, he ate um, healthy for one year. Maybe he knows that he has other things that he needs to focus on on his life and he's just not free to, has no free energy to use for choosing the food. But an athlete, in my opinion, would be aware of that. An athlete would have a plan of trainings and not just go on the bars to play and maybe sometimes do a ganger because he just tried 1,000 times for playing. You know, that's the difference between an athlete, a professional athlete, and just a guy that does street workout. And I appreciate these guys a lot. Some people don't want it to be professional, you know. It's nice. It's a nice hobby. If you want to be professional, you're going to have to have the mindset of an athlete and the lifestyle of an athlete. And again, it doesn't have to be, you have to be extremely healthy all the time, but you have to be aware of everything. That's my opinion. 
This is what makes an athlete professional, in my opinion, and an athlete and a regular person that does street workout, which is also very nice, but just not an athlete, a professional athlete, in my opinion. Okay, and when you talk about the professional mindset or the mindset of a pro yeah. professional athlete, for example, with, if I think about a freestyle competition and I'm about to go there, to go out there, the people are watching me, filming me, etc. How do you handle the pressure? How does a professional athlete handle the pressure? So I can talk for myself because different people are different. Some people are very natural with cameras from the beginning, very natural with people admiring them or contacted, contacting them uh, frequently and saying you're, you're awesome. You're, I don't know, you're a nice person, you're a crazy athlete. But me personally, I wasn't really n very natural in the beginning with that. I was okay. I wasn't extremely good or extremely bad. It was just okay um, with cameras and with people. When I went on the first World Championship stage, which was also only my third competition ever in Moscow, World Championship 2016, um, I had so many cameras and people watching me. And like, and all of the, like, in my, the front of me was just everyone in Moscow in my head, right? Watching me, all of the Russian people that liked street workout, it was a huge, really big stage and huge crowd. And then on my left, there were all of the crazy athletes in the world sitting on the bench of the athletes looking at me. I was so overwhelmed and I blacked out completely. I tried to do a shrimp flip once, I failed it, tried again, failed it again. Um, then I just uh, fucked up my whole combo. You can cancel that if you want. And it was just like too much for me, all of this for the first time and i just like messed up you know um when i reflect again about this i'm very glad it happened because i learned so much i always 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 mention this when people ask me for an advice for competing always mention this because i think this is where i totally understood that if you want to be good at competitions if you want to be good with crowds if you want to be good look good on camera you have to just really repeat this experience and just compete a lot because not only compete, but get in the mindset of a competition, even when you're training, to invite as much friends as you can to your training before a competition, to have them shout for you, to have people record you from different angles, to really um, just imagine that you're in a competition right now. When I prepare my friends for competitions, because we have some athletes now that are going from Israel abroad, I always, the, the most popular things I shout uh, when they're on the bars that you're in a competition right now you're in a competition everyone is looking you're in a competition this makes them stressed and where, when you're getting used to this stress when you're training uh, and when you're competing as much as you can uh, at some point you're gonna just feel comfortable in competitions this i can um, proudly say that this is around where i am right now i go to competition i'm stressed in a very good level, not more than that. I'm very, very happy about the crowd. I'm so happy about the fans seeing me. I really feel so happy, not stressed, because in the past I just didn't care about how many people it was. I just felt so stressed and I didn't want it to, to happen, you know, because I just felt bad. But now I just feel good. I'm really happy that many people see me in the last nationals in Israel. So many people came and I felt like I'm so happy that I can influence so many of my people. It was in the middle of the port of Tel Aviv. Many people that know, know, don't know the sport were there and I was so happy because I just felt comfortable with the cameras and with the people. Again, just because I experienced it a lot, you know, also in my mind and also physically. So this is just something you need to have experience with. And it's not something that you have to be passive about. It's not just waiting for you, for people to invite you to competition. It's doing that every time, like before, if you were preparing for a competition before the competition and if you're not competing, you don't have the opportunity, just do it in your trainings once a month Invite a lot of friends, as many as you can, even if it's three, right? As many as you can. Have a big session, get the cameras out, get loud music, as in a competition. Um, do it in a public place, even if you can, so people are coming. And just try to make yourself as pressured as you can. So you just get used to it, because it's possible to get used to it. This is how I got used to it, and now I'm really communicating with my friends and with the crowd. This is the, I can also say that right now, the biggest reason I'm going to competitions is not to win. I like winning, I like competing, I really like the competing, but my first reason is just that I can have a show, that I can really perform, that I can um, pass emotions to the crowd in different uh, areas of the world. In Hong Kong right now, it was pretty crazy. I had a very different crowd, as you can imagine, than what I'm used to, and I felt like they're really understanding what I'm trying to give and really getting, got, getting in my flow with me, and that was amazing. So, yeah. Nice. 
Um, I would like to go a little deeper into the moment where you failed the shrimp flip twice. Mm -hmm. How did you feel? Well, um, so when I got when I got on the stage, I was trying to, you know, go over my combo really quick, and the only thing that was in my mind was totally black, really, just a total blackout. I didn't know what I need to do. I only knew I had to do shrimp flip. I want to do a shrimp flip 540, for example. I didn't even think about the 540. I just knew I had to do a shrimp flip. I was thinking about it too much, and I was also thinking about all of all of the people. And I didn't think about what each of them think, but I knew that each one of the, these people thinks different stuff about me right now. And every one of them see me in 1,000 different perspectives. And this is not the right way to think about this stuff. You're, you're gonna really have to zone out and focus on yourself to really. Um, go through this experience successfully and I was doing the complete opposite because I had no experience so as I was thinking each of them is thinking about me something else the crazy athletes are judging me right now they've never seen me in real life in action this is the moment I have to prove myself I'm a, I'm a fan of all of them and they're just looking at me now expecting I was so stressed that I was just um, I was doing the shrimp flip I thought this is the moment I failed I said okay I can just keep going I, can, I went again I failed again this time I just got it here and then slept here and slept again. And this is where I started uh, from very, very stressed and energized, going down really fast. I was doing the combo. I didn't hold anything, I think. Um, I did the 360 or something. Then I went to the P-bars. I did a, like, a bit better thing, but not that good than what I planned. And then I just went off of the P-bars. I did this and went off the stage. And this is something I would never, never, never do today. Never. I would never just end my performance with a sad face doing this. Never. I would, even if I'm gonna fail hard, I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe like say thank you everyone. I love you guys. Thank you for being with me. Um, you know, with my <laughs> signatures, I'm not gonna say it, but I'm gonna say thank you to everyone. I love you. Um, it's okay. People fail, and I'm gonna go off the stage with a nice smile. You know, and because I feel like when I'm on stage. I can influence people, you know. When everyone is looking at me, I have the time, maybe it's two minutes, but I have the time to influence people because all of their attention is at me. And it's not something that is happening daily. So how I handle the experience on stage is how they are going to be influenced, you know. If they see a professional athlete for the first time street workout, they see him failing and doing that, just they're going to be influenced. Might be a good, might be a bad influence, but I... If I can control what I'm doing, I'm going to do the best to show them that it's okay to fail. We are professional athletes. We fail sometimes. This sport is very crazy and special. We fail. It's okay. We have to like um, mentally know how to handle this because mentally we can control it. Physically, sometimes p things happen, but mentally you can choose how you are going to handle experiences like that. So yeah, I freaked out totally. And this is how I learned how to not do it just because of this. So I'm very happy it happened. Wow. There's actually a nice story about that. I can tell it. 2016, I failed twice the shrimp flip. I didn't go to the finals. There's semifinals and finals. Then 2017, I trained for one year straight. I actually got the first place again. I went to Moscow again. I did the semifinals. I failed the shrimp flip the first time. I started again with the shrimp flip. That was a crazy, crazy risk. And then 20, like 2017, um, I did the shrimp flip once I failed. Second time I did it. I caught it and I did a 540. And this was a crazy moment for me because after one year of like work, after failing, in my eyes was in front of the whole world. I tried the shrimp flip twice and I caught it the second time. I was so happy. I made it to the finals and I failed in the finals. I had a little fail, actually a stupid one, but I didn't. I, I got like, I think 26th place. No, uh, 18, sorry, which is not that good, but it's a lot better than what I got before, right? Then I got 20. 2018 I got there again this was a bit of luck because I didn't took the first place in Israel I took the third but the first and second place couldn't go so I went again um, and this in this one I did the finals uh, semi-finals perfectly semi-finals almost perfectly <clears throat> and got the um, fifth place uh, yeah that was crazy and then 2019 uh, again I did the first round good second round good and got fifth again in my category so it was really a process of four years and this is again when i'm talking about long term this is what i'm talking about you know first world championship failed i can i'm gonna go there again next year i'm gonna work hard one year and one year is a lot you know some days you don't want to train <laughs> and some days 
you really want to train and you have to keep going no matter what. And this is how I got where I am now. That's like a really inspiring story. I know the video that you made yeah. on Instagram from this uh, stuff, but it's awesome to hear it personally Thank from you. you. Thanks for sharing. Um, like I have one little bit provocative question. Okay. Why don't you just settle for a normal life? Hmm. I don't find it provocative. I, I think a, it's a very legit question. Um, me personally, I have, I have a problem with the term normal <laughs> because I don't believe there's anything normal. I really, really believe that every human is unique. Even if some people look like they're normal, it's just because this is a bit deeper, but it's just because society decided that some stuff are normal. You know, we could be in a different society where different things are normal and you're going to be the normal. I'm going to be the normal one because everyone is hardworking and everyone is doing sports and everyone is doing freestyle. And then the guy who sits um, behind the desk and does programming all day, he's very unique. No one does it, you know. So I don't like the word normal, but I think that when you ask it, you, you ask why am I just not settling for, you know, getting a job like most of the people are doing and that I might not like, but it's going to get, to get me enough money to live and not really pursue my um, dreams. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah, so... This goes back to what I was asking, what I was saying before. <clears throat> when I really, and I still working a lot, when I really understood that my life is limited. Because our, our life is pretty long, we don't really understand that it's, it's actually limited. You, don't, you can do nothing about it. It doesn't matter what you try to do. It's limited and it's going to end at one point. In that place, when you get to it, um, you can either understand that it's depressing and you can do nothing and you're gonna die anyways, so what's the point? But you can also have the choice to go the other way and say, my time is limited, that's life, it's natural, it's actually pretty beautiful in my opinion because it gives value to your life. If it was unlimited, it would, be, it was a, it would have no value in my opinion. And then you have your time, your limited time, you see it and you just choose what you want to do with it. And when you truly understand that, I think all of the people or yeah, all of them would want to use it to the max. And this is why you can cynically ask a question uh, a, you can a person can cynically say um if it was my last day i would do that if it was my last day on earth i would do that but you know because many people if it was the last day of on earth for them they would do a lot of things they wouldn't do if like it, because they know it's not their last day but they don't really know it you know so when you understand that you have more motivation to do to do things and you just understand that there's no time for bullshit and for letting people influence you because only you matter only you matter only for me only i matter for you only you matter i mean in terms of patience and what you want to do of course other people matter and you have to take care of them family of course is very important and friends and the people around you but i mean you're willing and that is only what matters for you you know other people can tell you what you need to do what you want to do and when you understand that and that you have no time to waste you're gonna just use your time to the potential and this is where people um, define you as pursuing your dreams at that point, in my opinion. It can be 1,000, 1 million different things for each of us, but when you choose to do what you want to do because you understand you have no reason to do other things that people want you to do, then you're pursuing your dreams. And this is what, at the point I am right now, if this wasn't too complicated sentence <laughs> because it sounded complicated. It's all good. I think people will understand. Wow, okay. So, um, yeah. Thank you for sharing this. Um, I have one question for you. What is the thing that you would tell your 10-year-old self if, oh. if he would just stand, stand here? This is a question that is so hard. Wow, like maybe the hardest question I can get in these type of questions. But I think about these questions sometimes because this is, again... One of the questions they really don't have an answer to. It changed my answer changes, you know, for that. But the thing that I always, always want to say to myself when I reflect is that even when I thought it's everything is not gonna be okay, it turned up okay. Not because of uh, like mysterious luck, because I know how to handle things. And sometimes when I'm in a an extreme situation, I just don't feel that because I'm stressed. But at the end, always it turns out good 
maybe not one day after, maybe not one week, but long term, I find my way because my mind is set to the right place and then physically I just go there, you know, with time. So if I was, if I was to meet, if I were to meet my uh, ten, old, ten, old, 10 years old me right now, I would say to him that just don't worry, it's going to be fine. And when I say don't worry, I don't mean just sit, like sit and don't do anything. You're going to get to where you want. That's not true. You're going to have to work hard. But when you have this doubt about yourself, don't, don't, just don't listen to it because it's purely wrong. That's what I would say. Yeah, because I can say that personally, I doubt myself a lot. I'm not ashamed of it. It's, I think it's natural and for me, it happens a lot. But one of the things that I've recently, um, in the past year, learned is that it's just a voice in my head. It's not me. It's just a voice. It's natural. It's okay. I should accept the existence of it, but I just shouldn't accept the content of it. Because the only thing I can truly control, and I'm pretty free, is in my mind. I can control what's happening around me. I can do that. I can't control what other people think of me, but I can control what's here in th- inside and this is and this is why i can't let the doubts in my mind control me you know because it's not it's not you your doubts are not you they're just um natural thoughts that come to your mind because of things that you've been through because of your environment but it's not you and once you understand that it's it's a lot easier to go um it's a lot easier mentally to go through what you want to do so this is what i would say i would just say don't worry, it's gonna be all right. You're gonna have to work hard if you wanna get what you wanna get. It's not gonna be easy, but you just don't worry. It's gonna be okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. That was like a lot of content, a lot of yes. deep questions, deep answers. Yes. I would like to end this with a few short questions with a short answer like in one or two questions. Mm, one thing you can't live without. Mm, that's pretty easy for me. That's gonna be my dog for sure. Um, I really, I don't know, like my life has changed when I got him and I really know that I just can't, it would be very extremely hard for me to live without him. Um, I'm playing with getting a tattoo of him because Unfortunately, like my life, his life are not are limited, and unfortunately, a dog's life is shorter than a human's life. But I know that in my heart, he's gonna stay always with me, and I actually really miss him right now, and I haven't seen him for like three days only. <laughs> That's the answer. It's gonna be waffle. Wow. Okay. Your favorite workout spot in the world? Oh wow. Well, I, I've actually been to many places. But I think I'm gonna probably say that it's gonna be the beach in Tel Aviv. <laughs> nice. And it's not because of the bars, not at all. It's because of the vibes, for sure. Um, I really, I was in crazy places and I really like training in amazing places with amazing people. And it's really hard to say that they're like not, like they're under this because they're not, they're just different stuff. But my favorite would be my homeland with the people that I'm the most connected with in terms of what we've been through, you understand? And also just, I think that nothing can top the beach in Israel, (laughs) honestly. If you haven't been there, you can't really understand it, but it's just a different feeling there. And right now it's my favorite. Yeah. Also the bars are pretty nice. Although we broke them twice, (laughs) they're pretty nice. Awesome. What is your favorite move? Um, well, that's an easy but hard question because that was easily be, that would it be easily be a ganger, of course. But on the other hand, I have a lot of other moves that I really like. Uh, I think my favorite move is the ganger, but not because it's a backflip and backflip and one eighty. It's just because the journey I had to go through to learn to learn it. It was the hardest move I had to learn ever, and to control it, it took me like two years plus to have control, and it's. It's something that after you work so hard for, after you, I nailed it first time, then I, then I lost it five times. Yeah, really, it's, it's a long journey. And after you go through all of that with, with uh, an element together, this is where the connection is pretty strong. So for me, I like the ganger. 
and also it's really nice because they took it to the extreme you know to do multiple gangers something that i haven't seen anyone doing that extremely before me now people are doing eight and nine and it's really nice and it's challenging but i feel like i i actually made a bit of history with that move and this is why i like it more even nice what was your biggest idol when you started to work out um so i'm gonna i i'm gonna say that i'm not really I'm not a fan of the word idol. Also, I, I wasn't really a fan of anyone because for me, I just see the things in a bit different way. I, I'm not a fan of someone just because I think he's a god or because I think he's invincible. I really admire someone because I appreciate and respect the work and the way they, they've been through. And the, the harder I work, the more I appreciate these people. It doesn't matter where they are, where they are relative to me. I just respect hard workers just because I know how it feels and what they had to go through and at least the part that I know and there's also always uh, a part that I don't even know about that is hard of course so if I see someone that is very successful I appreciate their work and I respect them more than admire an idol but the people I respected and appreciated the most when I started um, were were probably in the very beginning, I think, Bar Brothers or Bar Stars, I don't know. And then when I got into freestyle more like professionally, it was Daniel's, Daniel Slaisans for sure. Um, yeah, he was one of my biggest idols. And it wasn't because of his tricks, it was again because he delivered a different, um, different perspective for that. He really, I feel like he put himself, his personality, his emotions into the sport, starts from how he dresses and ends on the technique he's doing stuff, which is different. And this is where I really understood that I'm gonna take this sport my way and not trying to mimic anyone. And this is something that I feel like also resembles me. If you look at me from the outside in the calisthenics scene, I'm trying to do things in a creative, different, my way. And yeah, this is why I really, really um, respected and loved Daniels when I started and now he's a really good friend of mine which is so awesome as well awesome that's how, how life changes and yeah it's evolves. amazing I would never imagine we would be such good friends when I just looked like that <laughs> in the beginning yeah. yeah but I also experienced when you look like that to people you will never like um, get really close to them very true because it will always be like uh, a weird situation. Nobody so different, wants a different fanboy of him, yeah. but everybody wants like a friend and mm -hmm. they are also just people. And um, that's why yeah. when you are on the same level and you feel yourself on the lame, same level. I don't think it's about the same level of sports though. No, not sports, but like human, like uh, oh, yeah. just oh, yeah. we're, we're both humans. Mm. Well, why Very shouldn't true. we just sit here and talk? Yeah. 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 Although I do believe that you have to have like basic respect to someone um, not because they're crazy athletes this is your choice you can respect or not but just because you don't know them and when I go to usually when I go to countries and new people see me they're very respectful this is something I really really like about the calisthenics community I feel like people are very aware of that but sometimes they are not even even if my in my home country in Israel people are warmer so they can be more rude and this is something that I believe that people should although we are all humans should keep in mind because we're all humans again and on the other hand you're gonna have to um, respect people the same way because everyone deserves basic respect you know that's true if I can ask you one last question what would you tell the viewers what can they take from your hmm. experience from your life what do you want to tell them um, and that's a hard question because I have a lot of stuff <laughs> Um, yeah, so if you're listening right now to this podcast, I'm gonna talk to you. But so, if anyone is to anyone who's listening right now, um, I just want to say first of all that I really appreciate that. Um, I really appreciate that you took the time to actually listen and and hear what to not only hear but listen to what I want to say and what I have to say. And I, and I'm really, really, really hoping that you took something from it. To your own life maybe it's not something that i said um, directly but you just understood about yourself that would that on, on, like only knowing that there's a possibility that it happened um makes me happy right now and if i have to finish with something i would say 
um, I would just say, please don't forget that um, a lot of things for us are obvious in this life because this is the nature of humans. You have to adjust. You can't always be surprised at everything that is happening every moment because you're not gonna, gonna be able to live. But there are some things that you shouldn't take as granted. Uh, first thing is your life in general. Second thing is the family and the close people to you that love you. Um, they might not be there whole your, your whole life, so you, you should show them that you appreciate them and love them because it's not it's not obvious that even one person in your life loves you as much as your family does. And this is something that you should show them. You should show them that you appreciate and love them. And for yourself, um, don't forget that your life is not granted and obvious and you have it right now if you're listening to this podcast you have your life right now you should appreciate that and you should um you should just take the steering wheel of your life and take control full control of it because no one else has the um no one else can take the steering wheel from you and has permission to take it it's yours although many people are trying many people will try and are trying it's only yours and if you want you can take it from them and you should you should control your own life and if you want to do something it doesn't matter what other people tell you as long as you're not trying to hurt other people of course you should go for it because this is the time to start you don't have you don't have the time your brain thinks you have that's it and of course of course i will end it if you have any questions if you want to talk to me about what i said if you want to ask me more stuff or talk to me about what I said or, I don't know, just say anything to me. I'm always happy to listen. I'm reading all of my DMs um, as fast as I can because I have a lot of stuff to do. But I'm not ignoring anyone that is respectful to me. And so feel free to send me a DM on Instagram and or comment under this um, podcast or video. And it would mean a lot. That's it, basically. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. And thank you so much, Phil, for having me. Thank you, Dan. I really appreciate that. Thank you for being here. Like, it feels like I'm, I'm feeling really, really well. Like, it's, really? I always li like conversations with you because it's really, it gets deep. You are like an honest and straightforward, but still loving and respectful guy. So, um, thank you so yeah. much. Thank it means a lot hearing that, you know. Um, I want to add any, uh, m one more thing. Um, because I'm not sure, like you don't have to put it in, but um, I, I don't know how I look. I trying to know, but I don't always know how I look from the outside as anyone. You don't really know how people um, get your image from the outside, but I won't just want to say I have a lot of insecurities, a lot, and I've had a lot of very um, bad periods in my life in terms of mental, mental health, and it's something normal. And if you're having a time like that, if you're feeling like, like you're not good enough, if you're doubting yourself constantly, if you're feeling insecure about anything, if you're feeling really bad constantly, that's okay. It's re it really is okay. I'm not saying it is a cliche. It is okay. You're a human. You don't really know. No one of you really knows what's happening in other people's mind. And I assure you that it's not what you are sure it is because everyone has their own story. And if you understand that, you understand that you can't really know what's happening in other people's mind. And it doesn't matter what they reflect outside. So being not okay is okay. Don't try to take it easily and share with people around you. And yeah, that's something very important for me to say because I, I probably look like a successful um, person on the outside. And I believe I am in some terms but I'm not perfect at all. I have a lot of insecurities and bad times and it's really okay. And people should know that. Oh, thanks for sharing. Awesome. So let's end it here. Thanks for watching. If you watch the YouTube video, thanks for listening. If you listen to the podcast, um, yeah. Thanks for being here, Dan. It was Thank you. a pleasure. Thank really. you so much. It's always a pleasure with you. Thank you. I'm happy to have you and um, yeah, just enjoy your life. I think uh, you can make a lot out of this podcast, out of this uh, thing. And yeah, keep growing every day. And yeah. thank you so much. See it you really soon. was a pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks. Okay. You. Bye, guys. See you.